Good morning. Makes a huge question. My presentation is on the topic of teaching sentential intonation through Proverbs. Segmental elements such as stress, pitch, juncture, and linkage are language universals. Unlike their being uttered naturally in the mother tongue, without prior training, the suprasegmental elements need to be learned systematically in the target language. Among many other techniques of sentential pronunciation teaching uh, techniques for second language students, exercises with proverbs and the target language can be utilized effectively to acquire natural rhythm and intonation, thus addressing to their interest in traditional wisdom and common sense, students benefit from proverbs and the target language, along with their grammatical and lexical importance, and can be taught to produce acceptable pronunciation and intonation in their new language. Pronunciation teachers, going one step further from word stress to sentential intonation, by working on a broad transcription, may produce a crystal clear pronunciation contributing to their better communication. Proverbs in the target language may be excellent resource materials for teaching pronunciation, stress, and especially sentence intonation, along with their many other uses in the field of ELT. The broad transcriptions of some English proverbs and IPA symbols featuring primary and secondary stress, pitch, and juncture characteristics with relevant signs, leaving unstressed uh, syllables unmarked, and clearly pointing out linkers can be effectively used to teach applied phonetics and phonology. The teaching of pronunciation and sentential intonation so far has been totally unsuccessful. One of the reasons many earlier practices have failed to improve students' pronunciation is that they consisted of markings only on the prominent stress on certain syllables, such as an apple a day keeps the doctor away, discarding the pitches, the stress variants, and the junctures altogether. On the other hand, with a finer tuning provided by the supersegmental features in their broad transcription, such items could be better distinguished and more clearly expressed. An apple a day, an apple a day, keeps the doctor away. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Now let's see this proverb in this um, broad phonemic transcription, adding all these relevant segmental elements on it and analyzing. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Because this approach has been ignored and neglected, foreign language students have failed in their effective oral communication and meaning conveying performances. Now let us explore this uh, pitch, stress, juncture, and intonation universals in some English proverbs as they correlate between the modifiers and those modified by their primary and secondary stresses and, and their linking processes. In a bid to address the attention of the Spanish speakers in the audience, some well-known Spanish proverbs will also be studied here. Following this methodology, learners of the Spanish language will uh, also be able to pronounce, for instance, such sovereignty is quotes and more effectively to delight Spanish ears in a crystal clear articulation. Dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres. Tell me who you go with and I'll tell you who you are. Dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres. I do hope that participants in this presentation will appreciate the special techniques of pronunciation they teaching specifically that of supersegmentals in IPA broad transcription showing, supported by all relevant supersegmental features, both in English and Spanish, demonstrated in their programs. What are supersegmental features and how they are marked in IPA? Supersegmental features are the phenomena extending beyond a single sound segment considered to be pitch, stress, and juncture, which collectively form intonation, also to be marked on broad transcription. The elements of intonation 
namely Turkish and pitch, help them break the stream of sound into manageable groups and give additional clues for meaning by either highlighting particular syllables further or assisting the comprehension uh, of the grammatical uh, or pragmatic uh, function. Supra-segmental features are language universals with their own particularities. The correct use of intonation is an essential feature of communicative of competence and erroneous intonation leads to communication breakdown. Although many teachers consider the pronunciation of individual phonemes as of utmost importance, some of them lack emphasis on the prosodic elements, another term for intonation or suprasegmental features. How are suprasegmental notions marked in IPA? In the connected speech, some particular elements of linking, simulation, and deletion are essential to make understanding easier for the hearer. Linking is a method of connecting the last sound of one syllable to the first sound of the next, such as left eye, the apples. In a simulation, which is another universal feature of uh, spoken language, one sound adapts to the characteristics of a neighboring sound, such as kubok, rujul, delicious appears in the form of religion and ephesus in receive pronunciation. We can see this in such examples as West Central Anatolia or chocolate, where religion occurred. In, so that's in the omission of initial E in, excuse me, that's ephesus. Juncture is a supersegmental feature that indicates the borders of words and groups of words in speech. The Prague School, referred to as uh, such elements as boundary signals neatly summarizing their role. Juncture is a sound quality signal a pause or pauses. Junctures are defined as perceptible differences in word segmentation. Pause junctures are characterized as the intervals between words and phrases and clauses shown as commas and columns or semicolons indicated as shorter or longer of such pauses. The punctuation marks do give out indications of which junctures should be used for which punctuation mark, namely um, form juncture sign uh, corresponding to um, a period, resin juncture sign corresponding to a question mark, and sustained juncture sign or uh, in correspond to a comma, semicolon, column, um, dash. By word stress or accent, what is meant is a greater loudness, change of pitch or greater syllable length. A distinction here between word stresses, compound word stresses, and sentence stresses must be clearly stated. Because combination of various levels of stresses, such as primary, secondary, tertiary, etc., do present special features in sentence intonation, where they are expected to coexist harmoniously. Most, as most nouns in English, the stressed syllable appears at the initial position. Verbs tend to have their prominent stressed syllables toward the end. As for the connected speech, the secondary stress occurs several times within the intonation units, both before and after the tone. Pitch is an element that brings music to intonation. Everyone has a different voice, and in general, men's are lower than women's and children's. Normal conversation moves between middle and high pitch, but low pitch typically signaling the end of announcements. The extra high level is generally used to express a strong emotion such as surprise, great enthusiasm or disbelief, and the pitch level is often used in contrastive or emphatic stress. Pitch is the most complex of the suprasegmental elements to apply to utterances because there are a number of different patterns uh, to consider as well as the relationship between different types of clauses and punctuation. The following juncture is used to pinpoint the end of an utterance. The rising juncture shows a question utterance 
and the pause juncture shows a sustained terminal break or a level break. The repetitive juncture is used to show the longer period of uh, pause between utterances. Let us review in detail on how problems are transcribed in IPA symbols. First, we have two examples, one from English and the other from Spanish. Um, to exemplify such supra-segmental features on their IPA block transcription, detailed analysis. A twig must be bent while it's green. A twig juncture must be bent, double juncture, while it's green. Following juncture. In the former part of the sentence, a twig must be bent. A twig is separated from the rest of the, uh, the portion. A twig must be bent by a short pause junction. The groove must be bent is preserved intact. The primary stress on must is the prominent position and bent falls into the secondary stress. Between the first and the second part of the sentence, there is a sustained junction. A twig must be bent while it's green. In the latter part of the sentence, while it's green, while its portions are connected with a linger, while it's, while it's where green is in the prominent position, prominent modifying position, and while it remains as the modifying. Thus they correlate with one another in the reverse order compared to the former part of the sentence. Which must be picked. The final following juncture indicates the ending of the utterance. Now we have another item from Spanish, a famous Spanish proverb already quoted with which many of you must be familiar. Dime con quien andas, y te diré quien eres. Tell me with whom you go, I tell you who you are. Dime con quien andas, y te diré quien eres. The sentence is basically broken into two, with a comma after quien andas. Di, dime con quien andas. Thus a repetitive juncture time to represent the long break in between. Dime con quien andas, y te diré quien eres. The first part of the sentence, dime con quien andas, is also split after dime, dime con quien andas, with a first syllable stress, then a triple stress combination dominated by the quien prominences, that is con quien andas, having prominence on uh, the word quien, leaving the two neighboring words con and andas in the secondary position. Con quien andas, con quien andas, the linger ties, the last consonant of kin and the first vowel of andas give an example of linking in Spanish. Con quien andas? Dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres. The second part of the sentence, y te diré, is also broken into uh, with a short pause juncture after diré. E falls into the secondary position because re, the features, always has the prominence of the last syllable in uh, future tense, dire, it falls into the secondary position, yielding to the strongly accented re final, final prominence of what dire, it is dire, and quien eres. Linkage is here between quien and res, while quien is primary prominence reduced to the stress last syllable of the res into secondary stress. The sentence ends with a foreign juncture to stop the utterance. Generous. Now we have some other English proverbs with their super segmented features marked on IPA broad transcription. A twig must be bent while it's green. Women. Women must have their wills while they live. Women must have their wills while they live because they make none when they die. You are Never too old to learn. A bird in the hand, stop. A bird in the hand is worth. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. A fool may ask more questions in an hour than a wise man can answer in seven years. He who with the daughter win must with the mother win. 
A woman's most potent weapon is her tongue, and she never will suppress. A woman's most potent weapon is her tongue. Stop, and she never will suppress. The pleasure of what we enjoy is lost. The pleasure of what we enjoy is lost by coveting more. Your son is your son till he gets himself a wife, but your daughter is your daughter throughout her life. Your daughter is your daughter throughout her life. You may lead a horse to the water. Stop. Don't you? You may lead a horse to the water. You may lead a horse to the water. Longer stop. You may lead a horse to the water. But you cannot make him drink coffee. So there's a different way you have to do. The same applies to all languages in the universe. Uh, to one of the host countries in the host audience, I would like to quote some Spanish words. A caballo regalado, no le mires, no le mires el diente. A caballo regalado, no le mires el diente. A buen entendedor, pocas palabras cuestan. Algo que nace o torcido. Tomás su tronco en red. Aquí en madruga, Dios le ayuda. Barriga llena, corazón entiende. Cría cuevos y te sacarán los ojos. Del dicho el hacho hay un mucho bien buen trecho. Es más fácil ver la paja del ojo ajeno, ajo ajeno. Es más fácil ver la paja en ojo ajeno que la deja en el coquín. Más vale pájaro en mano, más vale pájaro en mano que tirándolos volando. Si tu mujer quiere tirarte de un tejado, si tu mujer quiere tirarte de un tejado, procura que sea un bajo. Procura que sea un bajo, mayormente. To conclude my presentation, reflecting the traditional richness of any culture and universal being are also valuable materials in the teaching of the lexical, grammatical, and phonetic elements of the target language. Features of oral communication such as clear articulation and intonation are essential elements of language uh, students' skill in getting their meaning across efficiently in the L2 environment. Therefore, proverbs must be taught more often by pronunciation teachers to give them this skill while dealing with the target languages, phonetics, and speech rhythm. Technically speaking, this segmental and supersegmental strategy. Students who are able to use L2 proverbs to the point in their utterances always feel more confident and at home with the culture of the natives they are associated with. As they quote such proverbs, they not only demonstrate their skill to communicate with them. Segmental elements such as stress, pitch, juncture, and linkage <coughs> are language universals. Unlike their being uttered naturally in the mother tongue, without prior training, the supersegmental elements need to be learned systematically in the target language. Among many other techniques of sentential pronunciation and teaching uh, techniques to second language students, exercises with proverbs and the target language can be utilized effectively to acquire natural rhythm and intonation, thus addressing to their interests in traditional wisdom and common sense, students benefit from proverbs and the target language, along with their grammatical and lexical importance, and can be taught to produce acceptable pronunciation and intonation in their new language. Pronunciation teachers going one step further from word stress to sentential intonation by working on a broad transcription may produce a crystal clear pronunciation contributing to their better communication. Proverbs in the target language may be excellent resource materials for teaching pronunciation, stress, and especially sentence intonation, along with their many other uses in the field of ELT. The broad transcriptions of some English proverbs and IPA symbols 
featuring primary and secondary stress, pitch and juncture characteristics with relevant signs, leaving unstressed uh, syllables unmarked that clearly pointing out linkers can be effectively used to teach applied phonetics and phonology. The teaching and pronunciation and syntactical intonation so far has been totally unsuccessful. One of the reasons many earlier practices have failed to improve students' pronunciation is that they consisted of markings only on the prominent stress on certain syllables, such as an apple a day keeps the doctor away, discarding the pitches, the stress variants, and the junctures altogether. On the other hand, with a finer tuning provided by the supersegmental features in their broad transcription, such items could be better distinguished and more clearly expressed. An apple a day, an apple a day, keeps the doctor away. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Now let's see this proverb in its um, broad phonemic transcription and in all the relevant segmental elements on it and analyze it. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Because this approach has been ignored and neglected, foreign language students have failed in their effective oral communication and meaning conveying performances. Now let us explore this uh, pitch, stress, juncture, and intonation universals in some English proverbs as they correlate between the modifiers and those modified by their primary and secondary stresses and, and their linking processes. In a bid to address the attention of the Spanish speakers in the audience, some well-known Spanish proverbs will also be studied here. Following this methodology, learners of the Spanish language will uh, also be able to pronounce, for instance, such sovereignty as quotes and more effectively to delight Spanish ears in a crystal clear articulation. Dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres. Tell me who you go with and I'll tell you who you are. I do hope that participants in this presentation will appreciate the special techniques of pronunciation and teaching, specifically that of supersegmentals, the IPA broad transcription showing, supported by all relevant supersegmental features, both in English and Spanish, demonstrated in their properties. What are supersegmental features and how they are marked in IPA? Suprasegmental features are the phenomena extending beyond the single sound segment, considered to be pitch, stress, and juncture, which collectively form intonation, also to be marked on broad transcription. The elements of intonation, namely juncture and pitch, help to break the stream of sound into manageable groups and give additional clues to meaning by either highlighting particular syllables further or assisting the comprehension uh, of the grammatical uh, or pragmatic uh, function. Suprasegmental features are language universals with their own particularities. The correct use of intonation is an essential feature of communicative competence and erroneous intonation leads to communication breakdown. Although many teachers consider the pronunciation of individual phonemes as of utmost importance, some of them lack emphasis on the prosodic elements, another term for intonation or suprasegmental features. How are suprasegmental notions marked in IPA? In the connected speech, some particular elements of linking, simulation, and deletion are essential to make understanding easier for the hearer. Linking is a method of connecting the last sound of one syllable to the first sound of the next such as left eye, the apple. In a simulation, which is another universal feature of uh, spoken language, one sound adapts to the characteristics of a neighboring sound, such as kubok, would you? Delition appears in the form of illusion and professes in received pronunciation. We can see this in such examples as West Central and Anatolia or chocolate where illusion occurred. And so does in the omission of initial E in excuse me. 
that's F versus. Juncture is a suprasegmental feature that indicates the borders of words and groups of words in speech. The Prague School referred to uh, uh, such elements as boundary signals, neatly summarizing their role. Juncture is a sound quality signaling a pause or pauses. Junctures are defined as perceptible differences in word segmentation. Pause junctures are characterized as the intervals between words and phrases of clauses shown as commas and columns or semicolons indicated as shorter or longer of such pauses. The punctuation marks do give out indications of which junctures should be used for which punctuation mark, namely a um, form juncture sign uh, corresponding to um, a period, rising juncture sign corresponding to a question mark, and sustained juncture sign or uh, in, correspond to a comma, semicolon, column, um, dash. By word stress or accent, what is meant is a greater loudness, change of pitch or greater syllable length. A distinction here between word stresses, compound word stresses, and sentence stresses must be clearly stated. Because combination of various levels of stresses, such as primary, secondary, tertiary, etc., do present special features in sentence intonation, where they are expected to coexist harmoniously. A most, as most nouns in English, the stressed syllable appears at the initial position. Verbs tend to have their prominent stressed syllables toward the end. As for the connected speech, the secondary stress occurs several times within the intonation unit, both before and after the tone. Pitch is an element that brings music to intonation. Everyone has a different voice, and in general, men's are lower than women's and children's. Normal conversation moves between middle and high pitch, but low pitch typically signaling the end of an utterance. The extra high level is generally used to express a strong emotion, such as surprise, great enthusiasm, or disbelief, and the pitch level is often used in contrastive or emphatic stress. Pitch is the most complex of the suprasegmental elements to apply to utterances, because there are a number of different patterns uh, to consider, as well as the relationship between different types of clauses and punctuation. The following juncture is used to pinpoint the end of an utterance. The rising juncture shows a question utterance, and the pause juncture shows a sustained terminal break or a level break. The repetitive juncture is used to show the longer period of uh, pause between utterances. Let us review in detail on how proverbs are transcribed in IPA symbols. First, we have two examples, one from English and the other from Spanish, um, to exemplify such supra-segmental features on their IPA bar transcription detailed analysis. A twig must be bent while it's green. A twig, juncture, must be bent, double juncture, well, that's green. Fall into a In the former part of the sentence, a twig must be bent. Twig is separated from the rest of the, uh, the portion. A twig must be bent. By a short pause juncture, the group must be bent is preserved intact. The primary stress on must is the prominent position, and bent falls into the secondary status. Between the first and the second part of the sentence, there is a sustained juncture. A twig must be bent while it's green. In the latter part of the sentence, while it's green, while in its portions are connected with a linger, while it's, while it's, where green is in a prominent position, prominent modifying position, and while remains as the modifie. Thus they correlate with one another in the reverse order, compared to the former part of the sentence. Twig must be bent. 
the final fallen juncture indicates the ending of the others. Now we have another item from Spanish, a famous Spanish proverb, already quoted, with which many of you must be familiar. Dime con quien andas, y te diré quien eres. Tell me with whom you go, I tell you who you are. Dime con quien andas, y te diré quien eres. The sentence is basically broken into two, with a comma after quien andas. Di, dime con quien andas. Thus, I've repeated the juncture time to represent the long break in between. Dime con quien andas, y te diré quien eres. The first part of the sentence, dime con quien andas, is also split after dime, dime con quien andas, with a first syllable stress, then a triple stress combination dominated by the quien promises, that is, con quien andas. Having prominence on uh, the word quien, leaving the two neighboring words con and andas in the secondary position. Con quien andas, con quien andas. The linker ties, the last consonant of quien and the first vowel of andas, giving an example of linking in Spanish. Con quien andas. Dime con quien andas y te diré quien eres. The second part of the sentence, y te diré, is also broken into uh, with a short pause juncture after diré. It falls into the second position because re, the features, always has the prominence of the last syllable in uh, future tense, diré. It falls into the second position, yielding to the strong accented re, final, final prominence of what diré, y te diré. And quien eres. Linkage is here between quien and res, while quien is primary prominence reduces the stress last syllable of res into secondary stress. The sentence ends with a following juncture to stop the others. Quien eres. Now we have some other English proverbs with their super segment of features. Mart on IPA brought transcription. A twig must be bent. Well, that's crazy. Women. Women must have their wills while they live. Women must have their wills while they live because they make none when they die. You are never too old to learn. A bird in the hand, stop. A bird in the hand is worth. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. A fool may ask more questions in an hour than a wise man can answer in seven years. He who with a daughter win must with a mother first begin. A woman's most potent weapon is her tongue, and she never lets it rust. A woman's most potent weapon is her tongue. Stop, and she never lets it rust. The pleasure of what we enjoy is lost. The pleasure of what we enjoy is lost by coveting more. Your son is your son till he gets himself a wife, but your daughter is your daughter throughout her life. Your daughter is your daughter throughout her life. You may lead a horse to the water. Stop. Junction. You may lead a horse to the water. You may lead a horse to the water. Longer stop. You may lead a horse to the water. But you cannot make him drink coffee. So there's a difference between your two. The same applies to all languages in the universe. Um, to one of the host country and the host audience, I would like to quote some Spanish poems. A caballo regalado, no le mires, no le mires el diente. A caballo regalado, no le mires el diente. A buen entendedor, pocas palabras basta. Algo que nace o torcido, jamás su tronco endereza. A que madruga, Dios le ayuda. Barriga llena, corazón contiendo. Cría huevos y te sacarán los ojos. Del dicho el hacho, hay un mucho bien, buen trecho. Es más fácil ver la paja en ojo. Ajero, ajo, ajero. Es más fácil de la paja en ojo ajeno que la abeja en el poquillo. 
más vale pájaro, hermano, más vale pájaro, hermano, que leyendas volando. Si tu mujer quiere tirarte de un tejado, si tu mujer quiere tirarte de un tejado, procura que sea un poco, procura que sea uno bajo, my own name. To conclude my presentation, Proverbs reflecting the traditional richness of any culture in universal being are also valuable materials in the teaching of the lexical, grammatical, and phonetic elements of the target language. Features of oral communication, such as clear articulation and intonation, are essential elements of language uh, students' skill in getting their meaning across efficiently in the LTA, L2 environment. Therefore, Proverbs must be taught more often by pronunciation teachers to give them this skill while dealing with the target languages, phonetics, and speech rhythm. Technically speaking, the segmental and supersegmental structure. Students who are able to use L2 proverbs to the point in their utterances always feel more confident and at home with the culture of the natives they are associated with. As they quote such proverbs, they not only demonstrate their skill to communicate with them, they also appeal to the same universal values cherished by everyone involved as human beings. Identifying one another with all those around us as common citizens of this vast yet small world, we coexist peacefully by loving and understanding one another under the same roof in the same eternal wisdom. What is, I ask you, efficient language teaching for than if not serving this cause of universal communication in love and understanding. Subsequently, sentence intonation has paralinguistic basis, namely kinesics, proxemics, chronomics. Thus, they are transmitters of cultural elements in a way. On a more, on a more personal tone, we raise our voice when we get angry, like, uh, you call this a trip or wrong? To show respect, rise in Turkey, quietly murmur, rather than speaking in ordinary tone, in presence of their in-laws. A pleading tone. Last but not least, children in Turkey are warned with a stern warning with this statement whenever it is necessary. So he watch the role of grace in this utterance. You must study like your father. You should not be an ass. Or you must study and like your father you must not be an ass. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. I am available to... Any questions? Please. Ask your questions. Any questions? Enjoy your comments, your contributions. Yes. This intonation part, especially in relation to this topic, is very common on Turkish TV now. Turkey, remember those jokes over there? Sheriff Sissiniz? And proverbs are important when we are teaching another language. Okay. And this, you know, that's very true. As a resident of London for so many years, what are some of the proverbs that you've been hearing uh, in your own environment? Um, the first one that comes to my mind is like, take it with a pinch of salt, for I see. example. You must take some So that means. You don't. You should not believe everything that you hear. You, I would take no, it with a pinch of salt. So you should not take it. Take it with it. So whatever he says, I distrust. You'd like to make a comment, sir? Yeah. Okay. Would you like to make a comment? <laughs> no, I, I I came late. <laughs> yeah. It's quite all right. Yeah, but 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 I got to, uh, I, I got it. I mean, I. Uh, what is your favorite product that? has affected your behaviors and your way of thinking so far? Something that you heard from your parents or your grandparents? 
Whenever you hear, you think of your loved one. In his own language. In, in your own language, what's your uh, mother tongue? Uh, Arabic. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, what is it? <laughs> no, I can't remember any. <laughs> But there was, um, there oh, okay. you gave an example of a um, Spanish pro uh, proverb, right. which was a crow will right. something uh, like that. Yeah, that, okay. and that reminds Breed me of that. up a crow and it will pick out your eyes. Your eyes. That's so that's the sign of ingratitude. That's the card, also using it. I will appreciate if you help me to recall this most beautiful Arabic proverb. And I will appreciate if you um, if you quote it in the original language. The tradition goes that the most acceptable behavior in the sight of our Maker is our gratitude. Likewise, the most unacceptable and despicable behavior in His sight is our ingratitude. And the Arabic proverb is a monumental example of such ingratitude. The Arabic proverb, as far as I know, it appears in one of the Arabic proverb uh, collections is break the dish out of which you have eaten. So you eat your food on a plate, but the Arabic proverb says break it so that it won't remind you of your gratitude. If a person a person can have no heavier load than the load of gratitude. So a, a virtuous person only can take the 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 uh, the, uh, the virtuous act of showing gratitude. Ordinarily, people are most ungrateful, and God hates such an ungrateful attitude. So the Arabic proverb exemplifies it says. An ungrateful person thinks that he should break the dish because the dish out of which he has eaten will always remind him of his gratitude. So the best way to deal with the feeling, the, the, the load of gratitude is to destroy any sign of gratitude. So um, that exists in the listing of Arabic proverbs. I don't know whether that reminds you, but it makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah, it does make sense. It doesn't mean that the Arabs are ungrateful. It no. means that the Arabs also detest um, this uh, this behavior of ingratitude. Any other comments? In Arabic, men dakka Do you understand this? Yes. So yeah. what do you say about men dakka Okay. Yeah. He who knocks, he who he knocks, knocks is not. He is not. Yeah. That's the case. Okay. So very, very influential. Men dakka Right. Any other questions? No more questions? Thank you, Mr. I appreciate it very much. Who is the second presenter?